I originally intended this to be a garage, and it wasn't until years later I decided to move my woodworking shop out here. And this overhead fan, the blades pass underneath this fluorescent light, and it gives a flickering or strobing type motion that I pick up in a lot of the videos, and even when I'm working on stuff, it's very distracting. I want to raise the fan enough to get the blades above the light, and hopefully I'll still have clearance on that foam insulation on the ceiling. Embarrassingly, I got to working on this and I forgot to shoot the video. This is a Hampton Bay fan that hangs on a piece of pipe that has a pipe thread on both ends. The pipe threads are not used. It's cross-drilled on both ends. There's a, there's a pin that goes in the ceiling hanger and one that goes onto the uh, motor end with a cotter key to keep the pin in there. And once that's hanging and with these pins going through the pipe, the fan cannot come down accidentally. This was 24 inches long. I wanted to cut it to 4 inches long. Cross drilled it for the pin. And when you're done, make sure that there's no burrs or anything on the inside from the cutting or the drilling that could damage the wires. I did not use this trim piece on top of the motor because I really didn't have room to have this in place and still be able to hang the fan. And there's another trim ring that was up there on the ceiling, which once it was in place, snapped in place and I had a hell of a time getting that down. I don't need it anyway. This is a workshop. After rehanging the fan, I have a couple of inches clearance above the fluorescent light and an inch and a half on the lowest part of the foam on the ceiling. These blades have deteriorated over the years. It looks now like I need to make a new set of blades. After laminating two pieces of 1 8 inch hardboard to make up the five sets of quarter inch thick material, I stacked these and attached them to each other with pieces of double sided tape. Using an original blade, I marked the outline. I took these bits and chucked them up in a cordless drill and spun them backwards to mark the center points. This is the most critical end. I'll drill that out with a good brad point bit and then come back and drill these out. After all the holes are drilled, I will cut these to size and cut these flat parts out on the scroll saw. Round over the edges, and that'll be the project. The original edge on this eighth inch hardboard is rounded and when I cut these out I picked up that rounded edge right here on the widest part of this blade. So I put some five minute epoxy in here to fill in those little gaps. Once that's good and hard I'll sand it flush, it'll be just like this material. Then when I go to the router table the bearing on the round over bit won't be following that distorted edge. I had a pipe break and it sprayed the inside of everything back when it was being used as a garage. And these got wet and I didn't realize it. It soaked in around where they attached to the holders. There's a considerable bow to these. You can see that bow. And 
and the edges have split. This is very cheap material. This is nothing better than cardboard. You go out and buy a set of these if you can find them, and I couldn't find any for my discontinued model of ceiling fan. They're going to cost you half as much as a new fan. So I make these out of tempered hardboard, two pieces laminated together. If contact cement will hold for mica to the top of your kitchen counter, it should hold these two together. All they're doing is just spinning around. Now when I got done, I rounded over all the edges. So those will go in and out of those holders smoothly, which is something they have not done on this is a sharp edge and Sometimes these get caught on that bracket. This is tempered hardboard, which means it's a hardboard that was coated with linseed oil and baked. You can put this into a bucket of water and it, it'll have no effect on it whatsoever. All these edges have been rounded. This hardboard, when you cut it, sometimes can be quite sharp on an edge. So rounding it over and sanding it's a good idea. If you want to make replacement blades or blades to suit your own preference, this is a pretty easy project. These were all taped together with double-sided tape. As I separated them, I put an X on the top of each piece so I know that these were all made in the same direction. By that I mean if there was any slight variance that would possibly throw the blade out of balance. We install these with the X all facing upwards, all facing downwards, and this should spin evenly. On all these blades, if you have these cheap things, it's not a bad idea to reverse those blades once in a while. Let them hang the other way because that's pretty cheap stuff. The five new blades weigh 5.2 pounds. The original blades weighed 3.7, so they are a little bit heavier. Yesterday after I raised the fan, I put the old blades on and I noticed it had just a little wobble to it. And after I put these new blades on, it's got a slight oscillation as well. And I think that's because the blades are passing quite close to the two portions of the ceiling. A little bit of reaction of the air bouncing off of there. Well, I'm going to ignore that because it gets it up above the light and I've gotten rid of that flicker.